Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and it's Debsy and the place to be, it's Debsy. Bloop, bloop, that's me. Boop, Debsy. Hey guys, happy Thursday. I hope everybody is having a great day, if not a great day, and at least a good day. And it is Thursday. We're almost to the weekend. Woo, woo, woo. Listen, I have no idea why this is all red right here. <laughs> I got like a little blemish here, but then here, I don't know why it's all red. What the hell? It's the week. It's almost the weekend. And my face is like, let's get it started. Let's party. Speaking of a party. So last night, it was the return of probably, probably my favorite. Yes, my favorite city in the Housewives franchise. And that is Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. Um... For the longest time, my favorite was Real Housewives of New York City. And then the last season with the legacy with the OGs happened. And I was like, hmm, don't know about that. So my favorite is Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. I was so excited last night because <sighs> ding dong, the witch is dead. Rinna is gone. And I was so, so very happy. Listen. If you like Lisa Rinna, cool on you. I haven't, I, di I didn't like her. I don't even want to say from the get-go on this show. I didn't like her even like when she played Billy on um, the first time on Days of Our Lives. So was I happy to see her gone? Yes, I absolutely was. And so let's get into it. I watched, um, I watched last night and I rewatched today. So let's get right into it. They started off the episode by showing the trailer. And from what I understand, there is going to be a dinner party that takes up two shows. And I had heard that it is going to rival like the dinner party from hell. Mm-hmm. There's going to be some special guests there. There's going to be um, Denise Richards. There is going to be Denise Richards, Camille's going to be there, Kim Richards is going to be there, and even Cynthia Bailey from Royal Housewives of Atlanta is going to be there. So, I don't know. Andy is saying it's it's pretty epic. It's 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 a lot. He's saying it's a lot. And if all of those people were in attendance, I'm kind of thinking it might be. So, let's get into the episode. It started off with um, PK and Dorit. Dorit has, her hair is a little darker. At first, when I saw it, I was like, I do not like it. Um, but then as the episode went on, I kind of warmed up to a little bit more. So, um, Dorit had a couple ladies over to her house. And one of the women was Eagle Woman. She's a spiritual healer. And the other one was Nancy, but her name, what was it? Her name was Blue Raven or something like that, which kind of makes me think, like, what would, if I were a spir spiritual healer, what would my name be? Docile Pepperoni? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Put in the comments below what yours would be if you were a spiritual healer. I don't think I could be a sp spiritual healer. So, um, Dorit says she is going to have a spiritual retreat. She invites the ladies. All the ladies um, say that they will tend. She's hoping that they can open up and they can heal. Good luck. Good luck with that. Um, listen, the, the funniest part of this whole episode was my two favorites. Sutton and Garcelle, they are going to the um, the retreat. And <laughs> when Garcelle says her God-given government name cannot be Eagle Woman. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> her God-given government name cannot be, cannot be Eagle Woman. <laughs> I, I would have said it too. I probably would have thought it myself. Um, going into this retreat, Kyle says she was very hurt by a lot of, by a lot of people last year, a lot of the women, um, in how they handled 
the situation with her and her sister Kathy. Um, she's very nervous about seeing about seeing the women. Um, we then find out that Sutton bought a horse in the Netherlands. Like, listen, I'm gonna tell you right now, I need to be Sutton Strack rich. Like, there's rich, and then there's Sutton Strack rich. She wasn't just like, I'm going to buy a pony here in America. She's like, I'm going to go to the Netherlands and I'm going to buy a horse in the Netherlands. I need to be Sutton Strack rich. I'm just telling you. Um, next was Erica. Now, Erica showed up at the retreat looking very, very felt. Um, and everybody was like, oh my gosh, you're so skinny. I wish I could be as skinny as you. I wish I could be so skinny as you. And <laughs> walking in, she said she's something like, she feels like a man on her own island now that she lost her only friend on the show. Okay. Um, and she walks in, once again, everybody's like, you're so skinny, how'd you get so skinny? And then, then, they, then they flash on, um, Dorit's confessional. Dorit really got it, really, really got it going in for, um, for Erica. And she says, well, before that, I think Erica says, oh, it's hormones. Um, Dorit burns, Dorit burns her by saying, no, I think it's spelled O-Z-E-M-P-I-C. Now, that was brutal. I mean, that was brutal. I, I'm not, listen, I'm not about shaming anybody body-wise at all. However you did it, you did it. Um, I'm just saying, if I, if I were to take hormones, listen, I would probably put on 900 pounds and have a ZZ Top mustache and beard. So, I don't know. Am I buying it? I don't know. I don't think I am. But then, but then after people, the producer said, are you on Ozempic or Wegovy? Wegovy, because people were saying that. And she's like, no, it's hormones. And these, some of these people should think about getting them themselves. It's like, oh, okay, we're doing that. So everybody shows up to the retreat. Um, Eagle Woman gets everybody in the circle and they're chanting. I really honestly thought she was starting off leading into like that Jordan Spark song, Just Breathe. I was like, is this what we're doing? Or is this like a fifth harmony? So they're all sitting around the circle and Dorit's like, I will go first. She addresses Erica. She says she was very hurt by what she said at BravoCon. At last year BravoCon, the question was during one of the games that they were playing, the question was something like, which Bravo Liberty relationship will hit the skids or something like that. And Erica walked straight up and she was like, mm, 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 mm. PK and Dory. And then walked back. And listen, I get it. I get why I get why um Dory would be upset and hurt. Because I mean you think that that's your friend. And she just says uh, it was just deeply hurtful and it felt like it was, it was mean spirited. Erica says, well, it's, it was a, it was a terrible, it was a shady question. I said, I didn't want to answer it, but I had to answer it. So I am a show, I'm a showman. I delivered my line and I gave the crowd what they wanted. Back to the confessional, <laughs> Dury says, um, she, or she had told her, not in the confessional, but she had said, you answered it like it, like you were, once again, like you were mean-spirited and like you just wanted the attention. And then in her confessional, she said, you're not a showman. You're a bitch. Listen, I'm just going to say. And then Erica had said to her, is your marriage with PK strong? And she said, very strong. Um... Then we, there's a clip of Sutton saying that she had heard the rumor that when PK was pulled over for DUI last season, that there may or may not have been a female in the car. 
Now on the on Watch What Happens Live afterwards, Teddy Mellencamp, who I don't understand why they are continuing to have Teddy Mellencamp around. Teddy Mellencamp is no longer in the Bravo universe. She's not on a show. She was too boring. And so now she has to try and uh, listen. Her podcast with Tamara. I feel like she is using that to try and like stir up, stir everything up and show Andy that like, hey, look, I can bring the drama. I can stir stuff up. How about you have me back on? She took a swipe at Sutton on the after party or on, on Watch What Happens Live. I didn't write any of it down because I could care less about, I, I listen, uh, no, no thank you. Try Stop trying to make fetch happen. Fetch is never going to happen. Um, Erica apologized to everybody. She's like, um, I apologize if I was mean or I was vicious. I had a lot of stuff going on last year and I apologize. Garcelle was like, hmm, I'm going to be open to it. She's like, I will be open to giving her a chance, but if it don't work out, then this is karma. Um, Kyle then speaks and she said that what Kathy said about all the ladies had put a strain on their friendships and that she was expecting more from Dorit and Sutton. The reason that afterwards on Watch What Happens Live, she had said she expected more from them because she has known them the longest. And then she says that she kind of implied and insinuated that, um, that Sutton is just wants to be friends with Kathy because she wants to go to Kathy's parties. Kind of like she's a social climber. Honey, listen, she doesn't need to be a social climber. She got, she got the money and she got connections. I mean, maybe not like Kathy Hilton, but listen, if Kathy, Kathy Hilton would invite me, would invite me to a party, would I go? Hell yes, I would go. So what the hell? Um, and then Garcelle says she's confused because she's kind of wondering why Kyle doesn't go after the people who came for her family, meaning Erica and Rena. And then Kyle says that she is really done with Kathy because Kathy has done things to hurt the family. She's always done things like this. And she said she's tired of being a punching bag. That is Kyle's big thing. I'm tired of being a punching bag. So this is this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna. I don't know if it's it's not. I don't know if it's a mid like crisis or what. But after the retreat, and then they all hug, and everybody's everybody's okay for now. Um, after the retreat, Sutton had her best friend um, Jennifer Tilly to the store. And I have to tell you, their friendship I think is adorable. So she had them, she had her over, they were eating those chick, those Chinese chicken salads looked phenomenal, huge and phenomenal. And I love her, um, her house manager. What was his name? A Abby or something like that. S loved it. Love that whole relationship. Um, but she, she was basically talking. This made me really respect Sutton because Sutton was talking about how she wants to show off her success to her ex-husband. When they had gotten married, um, I, from what I understand, they started a company together. They did not have a lot going into this. They started this company together. She got pregnant. So he was like, you are not working anymore. That's it. And he gave her an allowance. And so that allowance could be taken away at any time. So now she is very big on financial autonomy and financial freedom. She wants her children to be able to stand on their own, especially her daughter. And she doesn't, she said she was in that situation where she didn't have anything. She doesn't want that to happen to her kids, especially her daughter. And I have to tell you, I commend her her for that. I honestly, I feel like this is an extremely, extremely important thing to do. And that is to have your financial freedom, to have a credit score 
that is, it doesn't have to be exceptional, but it has to be a solid good credit score. Um, I'm all for that. I think that it might not be like sexy and drama filled. I think that is a great message to go in through this. And listen, when they, they were shown some of the stuff that she had got in her like, in her divorce settlement, I take it they did not have a prenup because going into the marriage, they didn't have a lot. So everything that she's got, she's gotten, you know, she was saying, am I going to not get, say no to spousal support? No, I am not. Um, if she helped build that company along with him, why shouldn't she get what she's deserved? Um, but she, from what I understand, she invests very, very wisely and so good for her. Um, next was Erica and her therapist. Um, and thank God she is seeking therapy because the way that she acted out last year was despicable and disgusting. The way she talked about these, these so-called, that's what she said. These victims, I mean, who knows if they're victims? Who knows if they're lying or not? That was disgusting. So listen, good that you're getting yourself some therapy and she was acting out. She's no longer on Lexapro, so she can't like mix Lexapro and her and her drinking. Um, she brings up what she said at BravoCon about Dorit. And she said, Dorit, I know Dorit is upset with me about that. I don't know, maybe, maybe it is kind of, maybe she does feel bad about it. I mean, she was at the retreat. She was standing, she was standing on that hill with her chest out, you know, full chest. Didn't seem like she was backing away from what she said, but maybe she is, maybe she is feeling a little bit about that. Now, listen, the, what I took out of this scene from her, although... I know I said all of that, but how are you the age you're, you are and you have no idea what empathy is? Like she was like, what, well, how, I don't understand. What is it? How do I get it? Listen, you have to, ha you have to have it. How are you in your mid fifties and you have no empathy for anyone? I'm going to tell you right now, somebody who has no idea of what empathy even is, it's putting yourself in another person's shoes and feeling how they would feel. I'm not saying she's a bad person. I'm just saying, how do you not know what it is? How do I get empathy? Just uh, for Christ's sakes, listen. So next was um, Dory and PK. So Dory was having Kyle over and um, she was like, I think I'm going to have some of this pizza. The way she wrangled that pizza out of the oven, I wouldn't have wanted to touch that pizza. I'm sorry. I know her hands are clean, but that petrified pizza that's coming out of the oven, handsy, no, all handsy with it. I, I don't want that. No, thank you. But Dor PK was like, judging by the looks of her photos, um, I think she would just like a glass of water. She's really not eating, gonna be eating pizza. Uh, Kyle had lost, there was a lot of um, rumors going around and speculation that Kyle had taken something like an Ozempic, a Manjaro, or a Wigovi. And I have to say, I thought that at first too, but seeing what was going on, I mean, she, has give, she gave up... Um, alcohol. So she has not drank alcohol in seven and a half months. She said that watching herself at that party, remember last season, I can't, it was, I think it was Garcelle's party where she, where Gar, um, Sutton was talking to Diana Jenkins. Thank God she's gone. And then Kyle comes in and, and started yelling at, at Sutton and like getting all handsy and rough with her. She said she saw how she was. She didn't like that. So she has not had alcohol in seven and a half months. Good for her, good for her. And she is, um, she's working out a lot and she's eating better. And uh, listen, she had said she's doing a lot of that because she 
feels like a lot of people have let her down, including her husband. And so this is this is how she is coping with that stress. So Kyle comes over. Um, she says that she saw Kathy at Sutton's holiday party. She was civil. Um, she said that she's not talking to Kathy and she's not allowing her to treat her like she was in the past. Um, I guess she was never, she was had this whole like, I'm a little sister, I can't speak up to her, and now she is. Um, Dorit, Dorit is saying that she is, is still suffering PTSD from the break-in, which I completely get that, I understand that. But she's saying that, she's saying that PK wasn't really always there for her when she needed him to be, and that he was spending a lot of time in London. And then while I was watching this, I was also on, well, I'm gonna keep calling it Twitter. I know it's X, but I was on Twitter X and um, I noticed the headline pop up that said, PK and Dorit have been separated. They're separated, they've been living separate, separate lives and that he is living in a hotel. This was a question that was brought up on Watch What Happens Live um, by two call-in call viewers. And they had asked, what do you think about this? And I'm gonna tell you, Kyle had no idea that this had even happened. She was like, what? I mean, unless she was acting, I don't think she was acting. And she said, I have no idea. I didn't even hear this. Supposedly, supposedly, they are, the supposed, that's the headline. I don't know. But, I mean, Dorit was not giving, Dorit was not giving off good vibes in this discussion. There is some problems. And it looks like in future episodes, there are going to be some problems. Like, he isn't, maybe fully behind um, her, su her suffering, still suffering from PTSD. So who knows? I mean, this conversation that they were having, both of them were giving off vibes of marital problems. That's what I felt like. Um, next was Garcelle and her sons. Garcelle and her sons, they went to the beach for a, for a picnic. Um, her one son, J um, Jaden? Jade, he had said he wants more freedom. She was like, I think you have enough. Um, she said she feels like he doesn't want her her to parent him. Like, for example, if if he's not feeling good, she wants to she wants to do something for him, and he's like, No, I'm fine. You don't have to. He he comes out and says, Why well, needed your parenting two years ago? I learned how to parent myself, so we're all good. You weren't there, and I parented, I was parenting myself, which make ourselves feel like a huge failure. Um, I mean, it's, listen, I'm going to tell you this. It's, he was not disrespectful, and it's, it's good that he can vocalize this, but... I'm going to tell you, this might, this may not be popular to say this, but what the fuck? Listen, she, the reason why she was not working there, what, why she was not there was because she was working to provide for you. Like all of these fancy clothes that you have and these nice shoes and everything that you have. Um, that's because she works to provide that for you. Once again, I didn't think it was disrespectful, but she wasn't there because she was providing for you. That's it, period. Um, and the last scene was with Kyle Mauricio. Um, Kyle had said that it's been a challenging year for both of them as far as work goes. He's very he's very um, busy and so is she. Um, she then, 
uh, what does he say? He says, oh, you look amazing. You look absolutely amazing. You're working out. You're not drinking anymore. You are eating pro you're eating properly. You're eating healthy. Keep up the great work. You look amazing. Wait a minute. What is it with that tattoo? I didn't know that you had that tattoo. How many do you have? So he has no idea of like how many tattoos she has. Meanwhile, she was like, in the past, I would get a freckle and he would notice it because he would look at me. Um, and then he says, and I did not like this. He was like, you're not getting another one. I don't want you to get another one. You are not getting another one. Excuse me? No, listen, first of all, Buckle up, buttercup, because she is getting another one. And it's for Morgan Wade. So she got one and she's going to get one. At first I was like, is, I don't know. Is this like a midlife crisis that you're getting all of these things? But I think it's just from, it, it is from her being like, listen, I am not going to um, live under anyone's thumb. I'm not under Kathy's thumb and I'm not under your thumb and I'm going to do what I want to do. And he's like, well, don't do it just to rebel. And she's like, if I want to do it, I'm going to do it. So that's it. That was the first episode of the season back. So in the comments, please let me know what you thought about this episode. What would you rate it? I mean, coming back, I would probably rate it Mm, I'm probably rated a six. Um, do I wish Lisa Ritter was back? No, I don't. I absolutely do not. It's going to take a. Uh, it's going to take more than one episode for the drama to come. But as we know, there will be drama. So, with that being said, if nobody told you yet today, I love you. You were loved, seen, and heard. Please make sure that you put love, kindness, compassion, acceptance, hope, and positivity out there. Please take care of one another. Please also, in the wake of what happened in Maine, please, 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 please be aware of your surroundings and please be safe. Please, please be safe because you, you never know. You never know what is going to happen and please let's take care of one another. And I will see you guys tomorrow for a wrap up of The Golden Bachelor. So I will see you guys tomorrow. Love you guys. Bye, guys.